And now is the time to move forward, to take a step forward uh, for our next session, which is a fireside chit chat. I think the energies uh, are back and you all are rejuvenated. You don't need a breather. So in the audience present here, I'm sure that there are some who might have some amazing gaming business ideas, but lack of investment puts a break on their ideas. Yes, I have some good ideas. I have a good business sense, but yes, lack of investment always stops me. So the next fireside discussion or chit chat, I would say, is on cracking the investment game for all those entrepreneurs seeking investment ideas. This would be a great opportunity, I think, for me as well, because as a woman, I would also like to explore this ever-growing gaming business industry. So yes, well, the speakers for this fireside discussion, I would like to call upon stage. Okay, Mr. Prasad Wing, I'm sorry. Founder and CEO Amthil Ventures. Please welcome Mr. Prasad. Along with him, I would like to welcome Mr. Karan Keshwani, who is the Managing Director, Brink India. Please welcome Mr. Karan. Welcome Along on, with on them, stage. I would like to welcome the session chair. Uh, he already have a mic in his hand. Yes, Mr. Anil yes, M. M. Vanwari, Founder, Namata. CEO and Editor-in-Chief, AnimationExpress.com. Can you please put our hands together for the man? Yes, you'll be sitting in the center. <laughs> yeah. Okay, guys, I'm going to put a show of hands. I want a show of hands. How many, how many guys in the audience have an idea? Any idea? I want you to share your idea with us. <laughs> what is your idea? Sorry, I'm just going to do a, a pitch session right now. Tell us about your idea. Hindi mein bolo, Telugu mein bolo, konsi bhasha mein bhi bolo. idea in terms of crowdfunding if we uh, i basically work in the real estate industry so if i want to engage somebody for buying a flat say a luxury semi-luxury or any of the other thing then how can we engage those people and how can we get funds from those people and one more thing my mother has come over today she she is a retired scientist from government of india so she had a question to the panelist initially. So if you can just... Yeah. Please, ma'am, honored to meet you. Since you're his mother, I'm going to touch your feet first. Okay, ask the question. I am Veena Dhawan. I'm 70 years old. Play daily. Did you play daily? Uh, candy, candy, crush. candy Crush. And Mario also, I was trying. 1992. But now I don't know what is the specific brand loyalty for senior citizens. What team she is available It's for you people too. And they don't get any loyalty as part from because since we have the ages of and, uh, since we have uh, the ages of below 20, 21 to 45, 46. So there is games available. Now, if she wants to promote, then there is nothing for her to promote or something sort of type at this age, at 70. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. We'll answer that question from there. Anyone else, any kids in the audience who have an idea? This is an opportunity for you all. Prasad or Karan might actually invest in your idea. You have an idea. Let's, let's hear you out. Remember, you're pitching to an investor. So come, you have a one... You have an elevator pitch. You got to be quick. Uh, sir, can I speak in Telugu? Somebody oh. else translate. Achha, okay, okay. Oh, so I can continue in English. Yeah. So, sir, I have a basic like a metaverse idea. Uh, I'm a college student, but in the COVID, when I joined in my college, actually I took admission in Amit University Mumbai, but I am from Where's Telangana. Yeah. So, students, uh, the main plot of this idea is like students can explore their college and they can see their college in the metaverse before actually they're taking the admission because People are from like Kerala, Tamil Nadu and they are taking admission in Chandigarh, Delhi. So actually they need to visit those universities to check like how are those universities, infrastructure and everything. So what if we uh, like, you know, uh, bring that university to the metaverse and let the student experience uh, the university before joining it or taking admission. Okay. Thank you for sharing that. Anyone else? Listen guys, you're bright because after that you're going to evaluate the idea. Prasad and Karan. Yeah. Uh, introduce yourself and talk about your idea. I am Pradeep Goyal, CEO of the World Macro Stock Exchange. I am CEO of the World Macro Stock Exchange. And now you can see that the girls are 
कन्फ्यूज हो जाते हैं तो उनके लिए सेम्यूनिटी गेम बनाना लाइक पायलट बनना है तो उनको पायलट बनाने के लिए सेम्यूनिटी गेम हमें बनाना पड़ेगा अगर उसको क्रिकेटर बनना है तो क्रिकेटर की गेम बनाना पड़ेगा उसको हमें बनाना पड़ेगा नहीं तो उसको जो भी स्किल डेवलप करना है उनको डॉक्टर भी बनना है तो वो गेम सिम्यूनिटी गेम देख के वो खुद को डॉक्टर बना सकते हैं क्रिकेटर बना सकते हैं ना तो कोई भी गेम्स है क्रिकेट हो वॉलीबॉल हो कुछ भी उनको करना है और उनके पास इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर नहीं है वो गांव में रहता है तो उसके लिए सिम्यूनिटी गेम बनाना अभी जरूरी है इंडिया के अंदर आप गेम बनाओगे ओके ठीक है और कोई आइडिया कम ऑन यू लुक ब्राइट नो आइडिया नो यू आर नॉट ब्राइट यू आर लुकिंग बिहाइंड Do you have an idea? 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 Lady, no ideas. Okay. This is a sad case where you have an investor willing to Anurag, I'm not going to ask you. You have you already funded. Yeah, you have an idea? Okay. Talk about your idea. My idea uh, myself Prasad Bide from Mumbai Ambarnath. My idea is how a boarding school can make a game for a kids those who are staying ahead from their parents some of them having a guilt that parent has sent us to boarding school because they don't like us or they don't have a time so to engage them into the study and make their future bright and to be more focused on upcoming educational values how the boarding schools can make the game for them anyone else otherwise we are going to go back on stage and ask them for their evaluation of these ideas because this is all about funding private equity investment so i'll begin with prasad first he may, him being senior than karan okay tell me can you evaluate these ideas for us what did you think uh hi i'm prasad i run a firm called antil ventures uh great to be here honor thank you uh so i'll talk about the idea uh, this uh, gentleman had there uh, which is talking about um, doing walk throughs in uh, universities before you visit them right that was your idea uh so i think you know a, a lot of them today do anyway virtual walk throughs so you have to think about that when this whole metaverse concept came it doesn't mean that everything needs to port into the metaverse right firstly if there is a better way to do it through a video or a virtual walk through why would you want to create a metaverse game out of it right but if there is an angle to be able to create something uh, which is going to improve the experience of somebody who is going to visit it and who is going to experience it virtually before they actually can come there then why not so you know you just have to question that fact first that does that have an opportunity or are you just force fitting uh, something into the metaverse okay okay karan your feedback hi karan here glad to be here um i talk about that gentleman there where he spoke about skills and learning to be a doctor or a cricketer and i think this has an interesting connection to the edutech in the blockchain stack so connecting edutech to the web3 space where you can actually learn learn to earn so play to play to earn a shift to learn to earn we at brink have now launched a program to invest in learn to earn concepts and learn to earn projects at the moment um so yes and you can also even have tokens while you participate in the skill and you do the skill you upload with videos of what you've done and you actually earn tokens back so this is a learn to earn concept which we are going to be seeing coming out so so would you like to meet him afterwards <laughs> no sure no problem okay but you have to develop your idea further i think it's too basic an idea and he'll be actually educating you about the idea which i don't think he wants he wants the a person who's got the idea to really be very thorough with what he's planning to do i think my my point here was that what he's mentioning is already a vertical or a sector to is a sector that we people investors are going to be investing in and the various projects which will come out of the idea when interestingly right now um looking at someone who's creating the egyptian civilization on the metaverse and creating a learn to earn game of the egyptian civilization so that's an example or a project which is coming out of the space so fantastic so now let's let's evaluate what happened currently what do you look for as investors where you you know you'll probably have large funds uh you don't you look at a sub 700000 uh, investment or you look at large investments excess of 4 million 5 million so what do you look for the idea and after that what else um i think uh, for us uh, because we go in very early 
uh, usually we are the first institutional check in most companies. Uh, it's the entrepreneur or it's the founder. Uh, you know, while we have a, a you know a, a plethora of metrics that we have to look for, I think in the early stage there is not much data to be able to analyze, other than the opportunity size, uh, the timing of the opportunity, and mostly the entrepreneur. For us, it is uh, important that we're putting money behind the entrepreneur. Uh, and, uh, you know, we meet the entrepreneur multiple times, at least, you know, five to six times before we actually um, uh, determine the decision. We want to analyze and understand whether the entrepreneur is not just passionate, but persuasive, is doing work, uh, you know, uh, in the right way, is not expecting that, you know, you can just walk in and get capital and then, you know, uh, build on that. So I think for us, uh, it's important uh, the entrepreneur is uh, there. And then, you know, the check sizes are very small. We do $200,000 as the first check size. And uh, the next check size is $500,000. And then after that, once they've uh, built this, then we syndicate up to about $10 million. Okay. I need your understanding yeah, also. I think Brink is the early investor as well. Our check sizes are two fifty dollars to $350,000. So very small, very early on. Absolutely. We look at the people. In the people, in fact, we have to consider whether one of the founders has any technical expertise. What are their and that is a very key point. It's not just about the idea, but about the technical team already in place to develop the product. Then we look at the product, whether they have a POC. If there's a POC, is there a demo they can show us or not? Is there any IP which is um, g g allocated or assigned to the product? We then move on to something in the Web3 space, which apart from we look at tokenization, have they thought about the tokenomics? Um, is there a white paper in place listed on any token exchange? Do they have an NFT collection? So this is a subject which is in the Web3 investing space. We also look at tokenomics. And then apart from that traction, of course, whether they generated any revenue or any customers, any key partnerships, and of course, the financial health of the startup, and what is their runway, what's their burn rate, and any other previous... Uh, investors that are already working with them or friends or family or money of the founders on the cap table. So yeah. So you're the, basically focusing on the Web3 blockchain rather than simple uh, unity based games, etc., which is probably what you'd be looking at. Yes, we, we, we don't invest. We only invest in blockchain gaming and Web3 at Brink. So we don't look at gaming on the other side. So I'm giving I'm talking from our our experience. OK. Uh, and how many such companies have you invested in? And how many companies have you invested in? And what has been your hit rate and failure rate? So this year we've invested in 41 Web3 blockchain companies, not all in gaming, but in Web3 across blockchain technology, arts and culture, entertainment, gaming, uh, DeFi, which is decentralized finance. So we invested in 41 startups. We had around 2000 applications of people who applied and 2000 came down to 41 over this year. Wow. Uh, you know, over the last uh, five years, we've done close to about 75 companies, but primarily in the media tech space. Um, gaming, we just have one, uh, which is most uh, mostly a streaming platform called Router Sports. I'm sure most of you uh, have uh, been on that uh, channel. Uh, we have uh, an interesting asset called Amar Chitra Kada, where most of you have read those comics and grown up. And uh, we basically re creating some of those uh, characters into metaverses, walkthroughs, NFTs, games, animation, movies. So you'll see a lot more coming out of uh, Supandi from Tinkle very soon. Uh, so this is uh, our foray into the space. Um, but in Web3, uh, the fund uh, we're going to do is uh, in 2023, uh, which is a purely a metaverse focused fund and will invest in companies that are building technologies in this space. Okay, now we've had a lot of uh, bad signals around this ecosystem with FTX, with Miyoshi Son, with Sikawa Capital. Uh, you know, there's been a collateral fallout. How is it affecting your sentiment? I think sentiment is obviously affected a lot, we, especially after FTX and now Blockify as well. I, I, I think, but it's still a great time to build, right? Now when the markets are down, the, the people who have the ideas and all the builders out there or you entrepreneurs out there, this is actually the best time to build it. And this is the time when you can actually create something. So this is the time that we are looking at, we are ready to invest because the, the good builders out there will get the money and will build it. Yep. Again, I'll ask you the same question then I'm going to go on, on to further questions. Yeah. Sure. No, I mean, just to add to that, I think uh, very clearly, uh, this is the time uh, where you uh, build. 
you create, uh, you don't burn too much and you wait for the market to pick up again. Right. And, you know, it's not going to go away. Uh, you know, uh, it's just a technology that is going to stay with us for a very long time. And uh, content creation on this technology will continue to happen. There is an engaged audience, as you can see. So it will not go away. So yeah, one yeah, company… Are you cautious or are you enthusiastic? Definitely enthusiastic. I mean, we're still Ooh. going ahead with the fund. Wow, yeah. I thought you guys would turn cautious. We are at early stages. We, 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 we are not in the private equity game. We are build, you know, investing on valuations and drawing down valuations and uh, investing in companies which can't raise more capital because they've already raised at such high valuations. Like, uh, yeah, I know you're early seed. We're I the know. first, first like investor. So we, we look at finding the builder, finding the product, finding the idea and backing them. And, that, and, and we are not affected in the valuation game because we are so early, right? So, it's, so it's, we are in a different, we are actually backing ideas and people rather than looking at valuations and numbers. Okay. So, how does it work? How important is the elevator pitch? How important is a detailed deck? How important is each of these? As far as, let's say in gaming, in edtech, in, you know, edtech has fallen off the cliff with lots of layoffs happening. And, you know, if you look at Amazon, you look at all the global companies, Disney, they're all looking at layoffs. It seems like there is an economic downturn, which is really going to hit us hard next year. So, are you still enthusiastic that if in this space you're enthusiastic, how does, what is important, the elevator pitch? Is it the deck? Is it, is it just the idea which is, I may be a good, I may be a good marketer, but I may not be a good tech guy. Okay. Uh, see, I think uh, the most important part is to be able to articulate your idea or your value proposition. I think pitching is, uh, everybody pitches, but to be able to articulate your idea into uh, a few sentences, and come across very clearly as an opportunity is very important. And I think this needs, it needs training. Specifically, I feel that in India, that we don't, we are not able to um, describe the idea or the value in one sentence and it takes a long time. We don't pause, we have to speak very fast. So I think one of the parts is to be able to explain what you have inside, right? The second part is just not the pitch, right? It is, we go beyond the pitch. Obviously, the pitch will bring you to the table, but beyond that, what do you have in terms of fundability, right? I mean, is the team great? Is your, uh, is your um, uh, you know, POC very good? Uh, do you already have an engaged audience? Did you try on your own before coming to us? There are a lot of uh, parameters that go beyond just the pitch. But the pitch definitely needs to be well articulated. And when you obviously uh, get the time for about 45 minutes, it needs to be detailed 45 enough. minutes? I thought the elevator no, pitch is 30 I'm seconds. I'm talking about after, after that. Yeah. Okay. I'm talking about after that. So if your initial elevator pitch should be able to bring you to the investor meeting. But when you have an investor meeting, I want to spend enough time whether I want sure. to evaluate the opportunity or not. Okay. And then you need to be very well prepared. Thanks. Okay, Karan? I, I think Prasad has said well. We have a 40 minute IC meeting usually. We keep 20 minutes for the pitch and we have 20 minutes for QA. So that's the QA session where we actually drive down and filter the, the entrepreneurs. I think that is the more important part, which not many people, not, and it's important that entrepreneurs get their team, not just come alone on the call and they handle the QA in a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a good manner. But touching on your enthusiasm point, why we are so enthusiastic about Web3 is today we have approximately 300 million people who have digital assets. It goes back to, you know, the late 90s when, nine, you know, the early, two, or early 2000s when there were only 200 people on the inter, 200 million on the internet. So it's, we have, we had the late 90s where the inter internet was in the, you know, similar to that. Or if you look at decentralized finance, earlier the values were, the AUM was 250 billion. Now it's fallen to 50 billion after the correction. But the value is 50 billion. We're talking about 50 billion is going to go to 10 trillion within 10 years. So as a long-term game, for us, Web3 is a, is a long game. And it's, a, it's, an early, it's very early days, similar to what the internet was in late 90s. That's the point I'm trying to say for the audience. Okay. What are the challenges you face when you come across wannabe uh, you know, people are looking for early stage financing. What are the challenges you face, face Karan, in terms of, I know you gave the points what you look for, but be, besides that, what are the challenges you face in terms of the entrepreneur, the founder? What, what do you face, which is a shortcoming with them? I think dynamics of the team, the team and the dynamics. Um, as Prasad also said, we look at the people and the founders so early. So it's very important to understand who's the, we find 
you know, we invest in startups sometimes and the, the partners have a tiff and they, they split up the company or the CTO leaves and, and just things like that, right? And I think that uh, understanding the team and the dynamics of the team and ironing that in place for them, making sure they all have a fair equity structure in place as well, along with ESOP for the team as well. These are things which we look at, which I think is something very important uh, at an early stage investing. But Getting can an individual right. come to you? An individual, he doesn't have a team. He has an idea, a brilliant idea, which could... Uh, you know, if you look at what Zuckerberg, when he pinched Facebook when he was in uh, college, university, it wasn't a big team. Yeah, but he can, individual can come, but he'll have to hire a team, right? The hiring plan and the ESOP for the team available and who's he going to recruit? No, maybe he doesn't himself, know that. Right? So, maybe he doesn't know that. Then, then, then it's always difficult. We, we always look at having at least two co-founders, usually. It's Prasad, any insights precise. on that? Yeah, I mean, to add uh, to, I think, team dynamics. Uh, it is also a journey that uh, you don't give up very easily. And, uh, you know, for example, in the case of Router, I can say this, that they started off as a sports fan engagement platform. You really struggled with it for almost five years. And uh, eSports streaming started as a pivot, which became the main business line. But, you know, he had the tenacity to be there uh, for all these years. And I think... Most important part uh, in this world is startups. Uh, a startup journey is not easy. An entrepreneur journey is not easy. It's not about raising capital and valuation. A lot of you should understand that. It's about a lot of hard work, a lot of sacrifice. Uh, personal relations get sacrificed. A lot of things happen in your journey. But if you are able to stay for the long run, and if you're able to observe, understand, and implement that, and not be ignorant or arrogant because you've raised a large round of funding, then you will always be adaptable. And I think for that, that is important. But you're also looking on a return on your investment. So you've got a 10x on router or? No, we haven't exited. No, you haven't exited, but perceptible value when he goes for his next round or the third round or the fourth round. Yeah, I mean, usually we don't publish the metric until we exit. So, uh, you know, typically we, we're always looking from a fund perspective, we're always looking at a 4x to a 5x to return to our LPs, which means that 20-30% uh, of our portfolio need to return more than 10-15x you know, of what we have invested. And because we're all early stage investors, we expect a larger return because the risk that we're taking is also far higher. Okay. Uh, are the parameters different for gaming uh, startups or is it the same? Uh, in terms of not just the X returns, but overall, you know, uh, is there any difference when it's somebody's doing a gaming or a uh, blockchain uh, or a Web3 game? Is it different? Any different? Because we don't see a runway in the future. We don't know when it's going to take off. Yeah, of course, especially in blockchain gaming and blockchain Web3 is very different compared to our other sectors we invest in, which is SaaS or IoT or food tech, uh, you know, the different uh, uh, other kind of sectors there with more traditional sectors. So that, that, that is definitely different, right? And as I said, in the Web3 world, you have a longer time horizon and compared to the other, other way, you'll get an exit much easier in the other sectors. Great. I've asked my questions. Any questions from the audience? Shambhu, any questions? Anyone else? Ravi, you have a question? No. Okay. I'd like to have you all, you know, some last words. There are some young minds, not too many ideas, which I'm a little shaken by. I would have jumped at this opportunity and, you know, made a pitch. I'll make a pitch to you later. Any last words on investing in gaming? How, how, and how these youngsters can come up with ideas? How they can pitch to you? How they can approach you? How they can shoot a mail to you? Will you look at all the mails? Or will you just, they go into junk mail? Or do you have an executive assistant? Or you have somebody below the line who filters the email? How does it work? So we have a detailed form online. You can visit our website, bring.io, stroke, stroke blockchain for blockchain. Uh, and we have a detailed form application form where it runs you through the process and we filter that through after that, right? So that's not just the emailing the deck. We have to fill in our form that helps us do our qualification criteria and, and then we do a deep, so initial questions are 39 questions. Then if you get through, you get another question of 80 questions and then we take you to the, we go so through the deck. So who filters the first layer? Is it you or is it someone no, we have a, right at the bottom? No, no, we have a team. We have a team which, which does it. And collectively as a it team, does, we it gets to you after it filters through all yes, that. Yes. Okay, Prasad? 
same answer <laughs> no i'm just saying it's the same answer we have something called uh, this scalability quotient where we we have taken a few questions actually crushed them and put them on the website so it actually also tells you how scalable your business idea is and stuff like that but it also gives us a perspective of uh, what uh, your idea and plan is and whether uh, we it, it would qualify for taking the next step but there is a team evaluating on it yeah, but the good thing is you guys lead them on to higher fundraisers or you all don't if the team requires higher fundraisers you said so third there, round 10 million but beyond that supposing the need is for 50 million would you would you walk that journey with other investors with pees no, we do that only if it's a portfolio company of ours yeah so basically uh, only if it's a portfolio company if it's not a portfolio company we won't because our thesis is to come in very very early and do smaller check sizes when your fundraisers are small same with you all same of course if it's, if it's if we invest in it it's part of our portfolio then we will support the start startup right in the very end because we are a part we are a partner and, and, and when does your fund end when do you do you have a limited size fund and when does it mature no, uh, so, so you've got investors giving you money to invest or is it your own money in the in the fund no, that we you have investors who give lps it's called yeah, limited partners li limited partners so, so yeah, it yeah, does mature and they expect a return after yes, five years 10 yeah, years that's usually eight years eight to 10 years that depends yeah. on the value. I mean so when the fund has it been fully uh, used up or there's money left in the kitty no we we, uh, we have capital to invest we have 150 million to invest over the next 5 years so fantastic what about you so you got a new fund for metaverse coming right. up so but what about the earlier fund we done with our india media tech fund we have capital but we're not going to deploy a new deal flow we're only going to do reserve that capital for existing deal flow and in 2023 by around uh, june we're going to launch the metaverse fund So then what's the corpus for that? So the corpus is 25 million. Excellent. Wow. Bo boys you heard it spread the word around to your friends there's money here. Uh but you've got to come up with a good idea and you've got to get their attention very 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 sharply focused idea with the execution capability with the passion with the team. That's asking a lot and with a business plan. But that's what it calls that's what it takes to get money from other people. who are putting who are putting their faith in you thank you very much prasad thank you very much karan i hope this session was good enough for you i thought i learned a lot from you all thank you very much thank you